Hello everybody, I'm Ed Robinson and welcome to another exciting edition of the League Wraparound. This is the program that gets you caught up on anything and everything happening around the NFL. Coming up on this edition of the program, we'll preview week three's most important games. Also, we'll discuss a resolution between a cable provider and a broadcasting company and so much more. That's all coming up on this edition of the program. And before we get to the top storylines and preview week three's most important games, let's recap week two's most important games in the NFL. Thursday night football, the Buffalo Bills took on the Miami Dolphins. Tua Tagovailoa suffered an injury, a concussion, his third one in two years, did not return. Buffalo beats Miami 31 to 10. The Minnesota Vikings hold on to beat the San Francisco 49ers 23-17. The New York Jets get their first victory of the year. They take care of business in Nashville, beating the Tennessee Titans 24-17. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers took on the Detroit Lions. Very close game, but Tampa Bay would hold on to win 20-16. The rivalry continues between Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes. Close game at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Harrison Butker kicks the game-winning field goal. Chiefs would win 26-25. The Pittsburgh Steelers took on the Denver Broncos in a close game in the Mile High City. Pittsburgh would beat Denver 13-6. Sunday Night Football was a showcase of the two young rising star quarterbacks in the league with Caleb Williams and C.J. Stroud. In the end, it would be the play of C.J. Stroud and the Texans defense. Texans would beat the Bears 19-13. Monday Night Football saw the Atlanta Falcons take on the Philadelphia Eagles. Jalen Hurts threw a pass to Saquon Barkley on 4th and 3 in hopes of sealing the deal and ending the game. Barkley drops the pass. Cousins and the Falcons take over on offense. They head downfield. They get it to Drake London for a touchdown. Falcons beat the Eagles 22-21. to And that's a recap of Week 2's most important games in the NFL. All right, now it's time for my top three storylines. I want to start off talking about Tua Tagovailoa. Tua suffered another concussion last Thursday night against the Buffalo Bills. This is his third concussion in two years. This week, the Dolphins placed him on injured reserve. So how it, how it works in the NFL is that when a player is put on injured reserve, it requires a player to miss a minimum of four games. So this gives Tua time to go through the league concussion protocol. And at the same token, he's going, going to meet with independent neurologists. Now, there's a story that was reported by several media outlets that Tua has no plans to retire. That had me very shook when I heard him, heard that report that he has no plans of retiring anytime soon. Now, I'm not one to tell people what to do, how to live their lives and things of that nature. But I strongly believe that Tua needs to retire. And there, there's news about his contract that he has. Remember, he signed a contract extension during the offseason where there's an injury bonus and there's some guarantees in there where it's going to pay him a lot of money if he decides to retire in the middle of the contract. And that sound, it sounds like a, um, well, I'm saying this, it sounds like a pretty easy decision consider how much money is involved in that those getting that injury guarantee however i get where he's coming from because of that competitive nature and that competitive spirit but it's just not worth it short term and long term considering how we're becoming more knowledgeable on brain injuries and brain trauma and especially with cte and so on and so forth that's three concussions in two years And we already knew about Tua's injury history when he was in college at the University of Alabama. And now you're dealing with three concussions in two years. This is tough. And I guess, again, I understand, like, including myself, it's it's an easy decision 
when you have these injury guarantees and your contract that's going to pay you pay you a lot of money but I also kind of get it as well that you know he wants to compete but it's just not worth it it's just not worth it and I, I mean I know he's going to have a lot of time to think about this cuz that's his decision and his decision alone to talk to his family closest friends neurologists everyone that has his best interest but in the end it all begins and ends with him and i hope he makes a wise decision and a smart decision not just for himself but for the people around him that care about him short term and long term my next storyline is going to be the new orleans saints if there's any team that's been red hot in the first two weeks of this early nfl season it's the new orleans saints that offense is hotter than a bowl of seafood gumbo. Derek Carr, Alvin Kamara, Rashid Shahid, Chris Olave, Joan Johnson, the Swiss Army Knife himself, Taysom Hill. I mean, what more could you ask for, right? Week one, dismantling the Carolina Panthers. Week two, dismantling the Dallas Cowboys at Jerry World. And yeah, kudos to Dennis Allen. So far, so good. His job is on the line. This is a make or break year for him. But also kudos to Clint Kubiak, the new offensive coordinator for the Saints. They are really clicking on all cylinders. And I mean, it's like they are taking off. That offense is taking off faster than a Lamborghini and then some. And the Saints, I know it's real early in the season. We've only played two weeks, but a lot of the national media and a lot of podcasters, broadcasters, people that cover the NFL should keep an eye on the Saints as well. We're early in the year, but keep your eyes on them. So far, so good. Doing a good job so far in New Orleans, not just on the offensive side. Defensively, they've played well as well. You know, that's Dennis Allen's calling card. That's his bread and butter defense. So the Saints clicking on all cylinders right now and they have not let up in these first two weeks of the season my last storyline is going to be the rivalry between joe burrow and patrick mahomes i'm not dating myself but i've watched a lot of football in my day and i've seen a lot of rivalries such as joe montana and dan marino joe montana jim kelly dan marino jim kelly dan marino Warren Moon, Randall Cunningham, Warren Moon, Bernie Kosar, John Elway, Joe Montana, John Elway, Steve Young, Troy Aikman, Troy Aikman, Brett Favre, just to name a few. And then we had our last really great quarterback rivalry with Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. And then throw in Ben Roethlisberger, Philip Rivers, Eli Manning into the mix as well and we're blessed right now to see a rivalry a quarterback rivalry in the flesh in happening right now in real time Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes both of these quarterbacks completely different styles one is built on the razzle dazzle and creating magic one quarterback is tough as nails and is like a Timex watch takes a licking and keeps on ticking and their head coaches are kind of similar in certain ways, Zach Taylor and Andy Reid. But one thing is certain, it begins and ends with those quarterbacks, Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes. And we were treated to a fantastic game last Sunday at Arrowhead Stadium. The Bengals, unfortunately, committed a defensive pass interference. The Chiefs got in field goal position. Mahomes got him downfield just enough Harrison Butker kicks the game winning field goal Chiefs wind up winning by one point but when these two quarterbacks get together it's something else we we are in for a treat it is truly phenomenal in every sense of it I mean we are just treated to something really special between Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes and it's great now and I think it's only going to get greater later when these two quarterbacks play each other, and I believe they're going to see each other again, maybe in the AFC Championship, maybe even a playoff game. Who knows? But Burrow and Mahomes, the best just continues to get better. 
All right, that takes care of my top three storylines. Before we preview week three's most important games, I have an update to pass along to you in terms of the DirecTV and Disney situation. They have settled the dispute. So for those of you that were subscribers to DirecTV, DirecTV Stream, and also AT&T U-verse, you now have access to your Disney channels. That includes ESPN, the ESPN family of networks, also ABC, and your other Disney channels like Freeform, FX, National Geographic, Disney Channel, you have, you have your channels restored again. For those of you that may have been living under a rock or have not really paid much attention to it, DirecTV and Disney were in a contract dispute for approximately two weeks that left their customers in the dark, which means that they did not get in. They missed out on the U.S. Open tennis tournament. They missed out on the opening week of college football and the season opener of Monday Night Football between the New York Jets, and the San Francisco 49ers. However, after two weeks of those customers being in the dark, they were able to work things out, and now DirecTV and Disney have restored those channels. So you're asking, how did this work out? Well, here we go. DirecTV and Disney, they reached a deal that called for market-based terms on the pricing. So with the new deal, it gives Direct. TV the opportunity to offer multiple genre specific options to their customers such as sports entertainment and kids and family also um, inclusive of their Disney's traditional TV networks along with its streaming services such as Disney Plus Hulu and ESPN Plus in addition Direct TV will be able to offer Disney streaming services in its packages and also as a standalone. And also, too, Direct TV also won the rights to distribute Disney's upcoming ESPN streaming service, which is expected to launch in the fall of 2025 at no cost to its subscribers. So, basically, in what it's saying is that Direct TV is giving its subscribers the opportunity to have genre specific options or multiple genre specific options if you want to have a sports package in also included with the streaming services like espn plus or disney plus or hulu you can do that or if you want to include the streaming services with an entertainment kids and family package it also included with Disney's uh, TV networks, you can do that as well. Or you can just have your regular package. And if you want to get a streaming service as a standalone, as an add-on, you can do that as well. And also, too, let me just be perfectly clear. ESPN Plus and the new ESPN streaming service that's going to launch in the fall of 2025, these two things are completely different. These two streaming services are completely different. There's been a story going around. I don't know if it, if this is going to be related to venue sports. But there's been some dr some drama going on with that, with the whole antitrust situation on that. But I don't know if it's going to be called venue sports or if it's going to be something similar. But nevertheless, ESPN is going to launch a new streaming service in the fall of 2025. So that's the deal on that, how the dispute was settled between DirecTV and Disney. So again, if you are... A subscriber to Direct TV, Disney, and AT and T Uverse, your Disney channels have been restored, including the ESPN family of networks and also your ABC channel. All right, now it's time for a preview of Week Three's most important games: Thursday Night Football. The New England Patriots take on the New York Jets. So let's start off with the Patriots for a moment. A tough loss last week in overtime to the Seattle Seahawks. The Patriots still having their growing pains on the offensive side with the quarterback situation. Jacoby Brissett experienced, again, a solid quarterback, gets the job done. But the Patriots' identity is going to be defense really for much of the year. As for the Jets, they took care of business, went in their first game of the year, beating the Tennessee Titans. Aaron Rodgers slowly but surely getting back to his MVP form. You know, had the Achilles injury last year, slowly but surely. Still working out the kinks, made some solid plays, and did enough to help his team win the game 
over the Titans. And the Jets ran the ball well, particularly with Brees Hall. He made a lot of di- he made a big difference in getting his stats up. Also, Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, they made plays as well. The Jets defense played much better in this game. So you know about the history with the Patriots and the Jets, right? Belichick was the head coach of the Jets. That lasted about a cup of coffee and a pastry. Then he changed his mind, winds up going to New England. And the Patriots just (laughs) wreak havoc in the AFC East for decades with Tom Brady, Julian Edelman, Rob Gronkowski, Randy Moss and company. The Jets could just not could not get over the hump in terms of taking down the New England Patriots. But this year appears to be different. And certainly the Jets, they are a new team. New England is a new team as well. But the Jets particularly are a new team, of course, with their quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. So Patriots and Jets going to be a a thrilling game and an exciting game and an emotional game. The Jets first home game of the year. That should be exciting at the New Jersey Meadowlands at MetLife Stadium between the New England Patriots and the New York Jets. The Houston Texans square off against the Minnesota Vikings. So for Minnesota, tough victory over the San Francisco 49ers. Justin Jefferson suffers an injury. Also, Aaron Jones has an injury as well. That Vikings offense, is it's going to be interesting how this plays out. Sam Darnold, he's going to have a lot on his plate and is going to have to make plays and is going to have to be near perfect against that Texans defense that just gave Caleb Williams and the Bears offense fits last Sunday night. And we talking about fits. C.J. Stroud has the opportunity to give that Vikings defense fits as well and this should be a great game and I'm I'm anxious to see how CJ Stroud and the Texans offense are going to go up against this Vikings defense and I'm also anxious to see what the Vikings offense is going to go do against that Texans defense remember Aaron Jones a rib injury Justin Jefferson he has an injury as well this is going to be it could be a long day for Sam Donald because that Texans defense, they looked so good last Sunday night against the Bears. So we got the Texans going up against the Vikings. The Philadelphia Eagles square off against the New Orleans Saints. So let's start off with Philadelphia for a moment. Last Monday night, it was a train wreck at the end. Jalen Hurts throws a pass to Saquon Barkley, has a chance to complete the pass, get a first down, game over. Guess what? Didn't happen. Fourth and three, he drops the pass. Falcons take over on offense. And we see Kirk Cousins do his thing, take him downfield. Drake London scores the game winning touchdown. Falcons win, Eagles lose. So the Eagles are chomping at the bit. And they're not just going to be hungry for a po' boy sandwich when they get down to New Orleans. They're going to be hungry for a win. And it's going to be tough because the New Orleans Saints are the hottest team within the first two weeks of the season. The offense is red hot. Derek Carr, Alvin Kamara, Chris Olave, Rashid Shaheed, Taysom Hill and company. That offense is clicking on all cylinders right now. I'm not worried about the Eagles defense. I'm, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not worried about the Eagles offense. I'm worried about the Eagles defense because. The Saints can the Saints offense could pick that Eagles defense apart easily. The Eagles offense will be able to hold off. It's the defense that I'm worried about. And Derek Carr and that offense could be licking their chops. It could be a long day for the Eagles, and particularly that defense if they don't get it together at the Caesar Superdome in New Orleans. The Baltimore Ravens square off against the Dallas Cowboys. First for Dallas. They were embarrassed last week by the Saints. The offense just carved them up in more ways than one. Dak Prescott, no answers. CeeDee Lamb, he did what he could do, but it just wasn't enough. And that Cowboy defense was just shredded. Michael Parsons, he could only do so much. And Dallas is looking for redemption against a team that's looking for their redemption as well. And that's the Baltimore Ravens losing a tough game against the Las Vegas Raiders, Lamar Jackson, the reigning MVP. He's looking for some retribution as well. 
Derrick Henry, Zay Flowers and company trying to get down to have to get down to Jerry world and hopefully get a victory against a team that was embarrassed last week. And this is going to be an interesting game. It's going to come down to the quarterback play with Lamar Jackson and Dak Prescott. This should be a good one at uh, AT AT&T stadium in Arlington with the Baltimore Ravens going up against the Dallas Cowboys, the Detroit lions going up against the Arizona Cardinals. So for Detroit, Did not look good at all last week against the Buccaneers. Lost a close game. Amon Ross St. Brown suffered an injury. Good news is that head coach Dan Campbell said that Amon Ross' injury is minor and he'll be ready to go against the Cardinals. As for Arizona, big win last week over the L.A. Rams. Marvin Harrison Jr., great game, over 100 yards receiving. Kyler Murray was effective in this game. James Conner ran the ball very well. So this should be an intriguing matchup down in the desert with the Lions and the Cardinals. I think this is going to come down to quarterback play. Jared Goff and Kyler Murray, who makes the most mistakes in this game? It should be a good one between Detroit and Arizona. Sunday night football, the Kansas City Chiefs going up against the Atlanta Falcons. First for the Falcons, last Monday night, They took advantage of a mistake, a mishap on the Eagles' part. Kirk Cousins, you know his track record, not the best in primetime games, especially on Monday night, but he held his own, took his team down the field, throws a touchdown pass to Drake London, game over. Falcons win. So the Falcons won a close game. As for the Chiefs, they won a close game as well, beating their rival Cincinnati Bengals. So we've got a Sunday night matchup with Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs going up against Kirk Cousins and the Atlanta Falcons. Once again, Cousins' track record on prim- in primetime games have not been the best. But could he pull a rabbit out of the hat once again on Sunday night? We shall see. No Isaiah Pacheco in this game. He's on injured reserve due to a fibula injury. So Kareem Hunt rejoins the team and certainly Kareem is definitely looking forward to the reunion with Patrick and head coach Andy Reid as well as tight end Travis Kelsey. Monday night football double header first game the Jacksonville Jaguars going up against the Buffalo Bills. So for Jacksonville tough loss to the Cleveland Browns last week Trevor Lawrence in that offense there's trying to find their identity so early in this season. And it's going to be a tough one when they head to one of the toughest places to play, not just in the NFL, but in all the professional sports. And that's Orchard Park, New York. And the Buffalo Bills, you know those fans, they're going to be amped up, hyped up for a Monday night contest. It is going to be insane. And rightfully so. I mean, the Bills are 2-0 and so far this year. Josh Allen, so far so good, playing at a high level. James Cook has looked outstanding. And I think this is going to be a solid game, particularly with the quarterbacks, Trevor Lawrence, Josh Allen. You know, Jacksonville's defense is really good. And I think it's going to come down to how many plays can Josh Allen make and what's the turnover battle going to be like? Who could commit the least turnovers? Will it be Trevor or will it be Josh? Should be an interesting game. On Monday night with Jacksonville and Buffalo. The second game of the doubleheader is between the Washington Commanders and the Cincinnati Bengals. First for Washington, big win over their longtime rival New York Giants. Jaden Daniels was composed, was confident, made solid throws, also used his legs when needed and got the job done. But not just with him, but also with the the running backs, Brian Robinson Jr., Austin Eckler. Also, Zach Ertz has found a new life. He's found the fountain of youth with the Washington Commanders. Defensively, Washington was solid in that game, particularly with the likes of Frankie Louvu and, of course, the ageless wonder himself, Bobby Wagner. As for the Cincinnati Bengals, they are angry. They are frustrated and they uh, they mean business coming into this game on Monday night. Joe Burrow, he's got it on his mind. 
Jamar Chase has had it on his mind since the offseason, not getting the contract that he's desired. So you know he's already mad. So sent Joe, Jamar, and company, they are coming into this game with a vengeance after losing a close one to their rival, Kansas City Chiefs. It is going to be a war in Cincinnati on Monday night between the Washington Commanders and the Cincinnati Bengals. Now it's time for my game of the week. My game of the week is going to be the Washington Commanders versus the Cincinnati Bengals. This game will be all about the quarterbacks, Jaden Daniels, Joe Burrow. Both quarterbacks went to LSU. Both quarterbacks are Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks. One quarterback won a national championship, one did not. However, both players were electric during their time at LSU. One quarterback is all about efficiency and athletic ability. Another quarterback has the arm strength and the accuracy, but is also tougher than a $2 stake. They say styles make fights, right? And certainly these two contrasting styles are going to make for, I believe, for a great game between the Commanders and the Bengals. Washington riding a high right now, looking to gain the respect that they once had and not be one of the laughingstock franchises in the league as they've been for decades. As another team, they're trying to get back to supremacy and try to get that first Lombardi trophy. Washington Commanders and the Cincinnati Bengals. I believe it's all going to come down to the quarterback play. Jaden Daniels, Joe Burrow. I think it should be fun. The Washington Commanders and the Cincinnati Bengals. My game of the week. All right, before we get on out of here, I want to give you my picks of who who I think will win week three's most important games. Thursday night football, the New England Patriots versus the New York Jets. I like the Jets to win. The Houston Texans go up against the Minnesota Vikings. I like the Texans to win. The Philadelphia Eagles going up against the New Orleans Saints in a very close game. I like the Saints to win. The Baltimore Ravens going up against the Dallas Cowboys. I think this is going to be a close dog fight, but I like Baltimore to win this one. The Detroit Lions going up against the Arizona Cardinals. I like Detroit to win. Sunday night football, the Kansas City Chiefs going up against the Atlanta Falcons. I like Kansas City to win. Monday night football doubleheader, the Jacksonville Jaguars going up against the Buffalo Bills. I like Buffalo to win in a close one. The second game of the doubleheader, the Washington Commanders going up against the Cincinnati Bengals. I think we're up for a close one in in this game, but I like the Washington Commanders to win this one. So again, my picks are New York Jets, Houston, New Orleans, Baltimore, Detroit, Kansas City, Buffalo, and Washington. And that's it. And again, thank you so much for tuning in to another exciting edition of the program. Until next time, everybody, so long and enjoy the games. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share and subscribe. And thank you for watching.